Hello YouTube. I kind of wanted to do a very brief video update on what's going on in my greenhouse and what's going on with my collection, my orchid collection. It is summer solstice, June the 20, 20th, 2016, and it is a blazing 90 degrees outside and it's about 90% humidity in here today, so I'm going to try to make this quick. So hopefully I won't miss anything. I'll start at this into the greenhouse and I'll try to point out some of the new plants that I purchased uh, just this weekend at Hauserman's. Anyway, turning around this way, um, I'll just sort of point out these plants that are growing on this, this uh, angel trumpet tree that I mounted here about a year ago. Um, this Aranthes grandiflora, still putting out leaves. Might be a new one in there, but it is doing okay. Um, my Arangus hyaloids, which bloomed this winter. Looks like it's putting out a new growth. I will probably be removing these uh, pantyhose soon just to see how far the roots have progressed, if at all. Um, this uh, Cattleya that I mounted here last year also uh, did have some new roots on it. Um, there are new growths coming out. Looks okay. This little Erangus uh, mysticidii has not really done anything. I've just got it kind of sitting there. There's not been any activity on it whatsoever. That root does look like it's rotted, but I'm just gonna continue to let it just sit there. Hopefully it will do something. And actually, upon closer inspection, it kind of does look like there's a new root, com I mean, a new, a new uh, leaf coming out there. So hopefully some roots will begin to be produced soon. As I said, it's just sitting there. Um, this Orangus Hildebrandtii, which bloomed in the winter also, looks like it's uh, putting on some new babies down there at the base. And also there's some new leaves coming out um, in the middle, uh, in the fan. I'm also just hanging down here. This is a Bobophyllum uh, vaginatum that I got from Gold Country Orchids last year. It was in a pot, but I actually just mounted it on this slab and it is looking okay. It's got some new growths coming out on it. Oh shit. Oh well. Anyway, since that just fell over, let me just move on to this one so I can get away from this. This is a plant that I bought this weekend. As you can see, it was $14.99. This is a former Miltasia. It is now called, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Vialara, I believe that's what it is. Marfitch, Howard's Dream. I had one of these years ago, and uh, at the time that I had it, I had just got my greenhouse and I didn't have the humidity levels high enough. I don't think I was watering this good enough. Um, so it eventually died a slow death on me. Um, this one hopefully will do better in my increased uh, humidity conditions that I have going on here now. And again, excuse some of the messes that are on the floor here. I, well, anyway, I'm not gonna explain that. You guys can talk about me in the comments if you want. Um, anyway, uh, this has lots of buds on it. I do like the flower, as I said, I've had it once before, so glad to have it back in my collection. Um, moving on down here, this is a nice, uh, uh, Sobinacophia, this is a, this is a Umbertiana. I just repotted this into this basket and it's thrown out a lot of roots. So I'm expecting good things out of that. My Selagini Usitana, the new growth is maturing. Um, that's doing okay. What else? This is another one of the Dendrobium hybrids that I have. I believe it's Hawaiian Spectacular, which is a cross um, between Big Alex and Spectabile. Love the flowers. Did have another one. I do have another one that's down at the other end, but love those flowers. You can definitely see the Spectabile in those flowers. If you get any hybrid with Spectabile, I would say this one is one to definitely get. Um, down here my telumnias are doing okay. They have finally finished flowering. These plants down here are plants that I need to repot for sure. Um, 
I won't even go through those. This is a new acquisition. I got this about a week ago. This is my Dendrobium Uniflora. I believe that's what it is. Yep, Uniflora. Obviously, it's a mature blooming sized plant. It's got a nice, uh, nice new growth coming up on it, and it is in flower. Uh, flower did have a fragrance to it when I first got it. Um, I haven't really smelled it recently, but it did have a fragrance similar to that of uh, a Sidera japonica. So I'm pretty pleased with that surprise because all the research that I had previously read about this plant said that the plant, the flowers were not fragrant. So I'm sure that that wasn't a fluke, but I guess we will see. This up here is a plant that's been in flower probably a couple of weeks. This is a cross. This is actually Lalia Cattleya Pinocchio times Epidendrum Phoenicium. It's kind of, I uh, did have it inside in my office where it was getting uh, air conditioned temperatures and since it's been in back out in the greenhouse, the leaves are sort of going out because of the temperatures, I'm sure. But still a very pretty flower, deep, deep red with that orange lip. Have it planted, planted, or yeah, powdered up in the lava rock. Does seem to love that. Um, what else? This is a new cat layer that I got this weekend from Hausermann's. It's got that one inflorescence, and then there's another one down here. Um, plant is actually. Lalia Cattleya Hausermann's Fireworks, the variety Pegasus. Does that look like fireworks to you? Maybe. I don't know. Right next to it is a new plant. It's a division of a Dendrobium delicatum. So I'm pretty excited about that. I also have another one somewhere that I have mounted. So I've got one mounted and one potted. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, behind here is another recent acquisition. This is a uh, Wrinkle Stylus uh, Retusa, and it is in double spike. There you can see the other one spike, and there's two spikes. My Phalaenopsis gigantea is putting out new leaves. The roots are really loving it. They've got some root tips on them, and uh, did have another second flowering for me, but it's going out. Um, none of my angraecums have progressed as far as the, my last update. Still putting out new roots. Growth still looks pretty strong and healthy. My farmer eye is putting out three new growths, which is good. It did have a nice bloom, which was included on my last update for May, I suppose that is. My, I almost lost this plant. This is my Bananopsis uh, corna cervi. Um, I, it was attacked by scale, and I, uh, like I said, I almost lost it. Uh, all of the inflorescences that it had at the time died off and browned. I kept it in the, kept it outside all last summer and uh, sprayed it pretty frequently for the scale. Um, and it came back over the winter and, and has uh, pushed out three new uh, spikes, and now it's about to flower which is a good thing. Up here is my, another species Phalaenopsis. This is my Bastianii. Um, it was in spike for, seemed like six months. And when I went on vacation, uh, that was when it really started to open up and form the buds. And uh, it actually pushed out a couple more spikes, which are behind there that you can see. And it has been in bloom probably for another, for a couple weeks as well. Uh, down below here is a no-ID phalaenopsis. I got this at Trader Joe's, uh, I don't know, six months ago. And it's continuing to push out flowers. This is the new flower, and this is an older flower. It's amazing how big of a color difference it is. Up above here is my Kaisis aurea. Um, as you may know, this plant grows similar to like a catacetum where, well, I shouldn't say that. It does not grow similar to a catacetum. 
what it does is when it pushes out the new growths, after these growths go dormant, then it, the spike forms as it is forming the new growth. So this will be next year's new growth, which hopefully will have a, have a flower from it. And this is this year's new growth. The flowers, I haven't detected any fragrance to them yet. And they are very slow to open. This has been like this probably already uh, two weeks. And there's still flowers on it yet to open. So very uh, heavy substance, leaves, or not leaves, but flowers. Um, just long lasting, pretty color. Elsewhere, this is my Epidendrum tampensis, which is in multiple spikes. It's been like this for weeks, slowly developing. I forgot. Over here is my Gongora. This is the tag reads Histrionica, but I believe it says Polyi also, so I don't know. I think those are two distinctly different species. I don't know why they're grouped together, but I wanted to get a Histrionica. That's what I've always wanted. So um, I don't know what happened, what I was doing wrong with the spike. The spike was yay long and it was covered in buds and nothing was eating them. It was just that they were falling off before they opened. These have been on here now, gosh, for a week. So um, I just know one day I'll come out and they will be flush open. So I'm hoping that none of them, no more of them drop off. Uh, but anyway, that is that. This is the first time I have blown this. I've had this for a couple of years. And uh, like I said, it's uh, pushing out some new growth up in here. So that's a good thing. Right next to it is, uh, this is an unknown encyclia that is about to open. I'm not sure what this is. I got this at the uh, Chicago, the, or the Illinois Orchid Society member sale. Bought this plant for $10, so it's an unknown encyclia. And looks like I see some new growth coming up as well. So that flower will be a surprise. Let me see what else is going on in here. This is my, this? this is my Lacarsia Benetii. I need to repot, or not repot this, but remount this on something. It's, it was like this when I got it, but the growths were a lot more dry, and since I've it's come into my care, it's firmed up some. And at the end of this, looks to be a flower bud. At least that's what I think it is. I can't really focus it that well, not with my camera. But anyway, that looks to be a flower bud, but we shall see. And down below here, as I'm looking, this is a bubble film that I got from Bill Toms at bubblefilm.com. You should check out his website. Um, he's got some great crosses there and also large variety of flasks. So check it out. And also you should check out his uh, Facebook page for some of his videos of his growing uh, environment, which is amazing, spectacular. Uh, you just got to check it out. Anyway, this is Boba Phil and Bicolor. This is Red Bird. I have another uh, clone of Bicolor, which I will actually just go right now. This is uh, Bicolor Kaylee Marie. This was also got uh, purchased from Bill Tom. I don't know if you can see the difference. The other one does have more red, I believe, that's on the coming out from the lip or from the, the petal, I believe. But recently repotted and now it's blooming. So, gotta love that. Down below here, this is a recently remounted. Re, uh, uh, this is also another bubble filling vaginatum that I have. And it's pushing out some new growths. I believe those are new growths. Let me see, let me put this tag back in this plant. Yeah, there is some, definitely some purple at the top, which totally is not on the other Kaylee Marie. 
hence the, I don't know if that's why it's called Red Bird or not, but it's what it is. And that's that. Right here, I'm actually kind of cautious to uh, show this. This is my recently purchased uh, uh, leafless orchid. This is the Notorious Ghost Orchid. And I purchased this from Orchids Limited out of Minnesota. Um, I did have this just mounted on this piece of wood and it was hanging up high in the greenhouse surrounded with this moss because these do not like uh, air movement. So the moss is to protect it as well from the moving air. And I don't think it was getting enough water. As you can see, the roots are very green. So they are well, well hydrated right now. And I am getting ready to leave Wednesday for five days. And um, so I'm hoping that this keeps this uh, this piece of wood moist so the roots stay moist the five days that I'm gone. I'm really kind of worried about this orchid. This is the only orchid that I'm really worried about. Um, I'm not worried about the humidity because I know it will get the humidity, but I'm just worried about the moisture, especially when I'm gone. Um, but I have it sitting in this clear tray. It's mounted on some, it's got some leak at the bottom which holds the water and then some sphagnum. And it's pushed down so that the water wicks up from the bottom all the way to the top layer and then sort of keeps the wood on the moist side. And so hopefully the roots will will uh, stay hydrated. Um, I really was uh, ambivalent about showing you this because it is such a small plant. I mean, it's beyond a seedling. It's not, it looks like it should still be in flask. But anyhow, it's an experiment. Um, who doesn't want to try to grow a ghost orchid? And this is the, uh, this is the Lindinia, I believe. Uh, the one that everybody wants. Yes, it is. It's the Lindinia. So, that is my ghost orchid. Moving right along. Uh, this is my little Hirella Rectocala, which is doing really well. I watered a lot. Probably should water it now. Um, it's got some new growths coming out. So there's a spike in there pushing out somewhere. It has already bloomed for me early this spring. Yeah, there's a spike right there. Roots are really looking really nice. Overall, a nice plant. What else? Um, let me look over here. These are a couple recent purchases. I got this over the weekend. This is a cat lay I got from Hausermann's. This is Marcella Koss, pink marble. It gets a really nice sized pink flower. I believe there is maybe some yellow on the lip. It does have a sheath on it. So hopefully I'll get some flowers at some point. And behind that is another cat lid that I got. And this is a BLC Empress Worsley Roman Holiday. And this has got some uh, buds popping out. And I believe there's some new growths back there as well. This flower looks, uh, it's like a fuchsia pink with some, with flaring spots. Looks like uh, sort of maybe a little spotty, but definitely some flaring along the petals. Very pretty pink and white flower. So I'll make sure to show this when I, when the blooms open. Nothing else going on here. My uh, Leptodes by Colors putting out some new growth and roots and I removed the, uh, there was a pantyhose thing holding on to the moss and I took that off and the roots have gone into the moss and are going wild on the mount, doing well. My Tolumnies up here as well are attaching the roots to the mound and doing well. Behind here is my Cyclia alata, which I don't think this is a lotta because, well, this does not look like a lotta at all. This is not a lotta. There is no fragrance. There is no brown on the petals. Uh, no yellowing on the lip. No spicy fragrance whatsoever. So I'm pretty disappointed with that. I'm happy for the flower, but I'm disappointed that it is not a lotta because I love a lotta. Upstairs, uh, my big dendrobium phalaenopsis, well, bubble phalaenopsis with a nice, healthy new growth. Uh, 
Uh, this is how big the plant is. Um, this is the only Vanda that I have. It's pushing out some new root tips, doing pretty well. Still no flower spike yet, although I'm not gonna climb up there and look. It's not that important, it'll show itself if it does. Big fat root point push, push, pushing out right there, so I'm expecting good things from that plant. Down below here is my Encyclia Cordigera. Still in full bloom, still smelling pretty beautiful. Um, I keep it down here, uh, well, I had it at the office the last couple of weeks. It's been in bloom for probably three weeks. Um, still looking good, still smelling good. It's down there because I, I don't want the, the, the bright sunlight to, to make the flowers go fast. So that's an attempt. Um, everything up here is looking well. This is my path Bellina that I almost lost last year. It did have a scale as well. And I had to leave it out. Last year my outside was my ICU and it was out there all summer. I uh, brought it in over the winter and it started um, pushing out new leaves. Looks like there's a little root coming out there and some more under there so it looks like it has recovered. Over here, down here is a rec recent acquisition. This is a cross, half cross, De La Natiae times Miller I think it's Lynn Kupovich, maybe. But it is in bud. I have another, actually this is Lynn Kupovich, and it's pretty much been like this for years. So I wanted to see the flowers, and that's why I got this. Um, I was patient on this one, but I got this one. So now I have two. Also moving on down, this is my Mysticidium capense. Still trying to open up its flowers, going very, very slow. This one has been open for a few days, but the other ones, no, not so much. These plants like copious amounts of water in the summer, especially when it's as hot as it is. As you can see, it says it's 85. I don't know if this is pretty accurate. It says it's 65% humidity, but I turned off my humidifiers for a while now. Anyway, moving on down, this is my, another Angricum cross that is been open for a little while. This is Joyce Stewart, cross between uh, Scottianum and uh, Cucolatum. Did make a video on this plant, so I won't go on about it, but it's in bloom for, for a while. The other flower that it was was on it has, is browning and going out. Up above here is my Phalaenopsis cross between Marii and Gigante. No, it's Cornuana. Can't, can't ever say that. And, and Gigantia. I've had this plant for a couple of years now and it's blown faithfully. Keeps these uh, uh, spikes on the plant all year round. And then at the beginning of spring, coming going into summer, the spikes begin to elongate and that's when it forms its flower buds. I have not detected a fragrance, although probably it probably should because of the, both of the parents of the species, both of the parents, I believe, have some fragrance to them, but not this very beautiful flower. Really like that cross. Anyway, I'm sweating like a pig, so I'm just going to keep on moving. Behind me here is my brand new Encyclia Cochleata that I just got this weekend. I had one of these years ago, and uh, some reason it just didn't like me. Bloomed once and then it slowly died. So I have another one and it's got another spike yet. And actually the spike that is in flower has another little side shoot on it with spuds. So that's pretty nice, that's pretty good. My Maxillaria Shunkiana, still putting out new growths. Actually looks like the growths are maturing somewhat. Had a lot of new growths on this this year, so I'm expecting a lot of flowers come uh, fall. This is the black maxillaria. Um, it's probably about it for down here. Um, this is my new Selogeny. This is Linda Buckley. This is a cross between Cristada and another one. I believe it starts with an M. Maasai, maybe. 
but the new growths on it are looking pretty good. That one looks pretty slow, but this one is looking okay. This is my only one and only light casty that's got some new growth. I'm not sure what to do with that, whether or not to water it or repot it, or so I'm just kind of leaving it for now. Um, that's pretty much it. This is like a little baby seedling that I took off of a. Uh, it's either Prince Edward of York or uh, what's the other one? Um, Prince Edward of York or the other one that's multifloral with Ross Chili on them. I can't think of it right now, but it's either that or the other. <laughs> I know that's not really explaining it well, but I pulled this off of a plant that was dying and uh, didn't think that it would ever survive, and it was. The smallest one that's in there and it has since put out two more new growths so and this is the latest one so hopefully it will do something get back to a bloom sized plant if it, if it does that will be a miracle because literally it started from nothing so that's pretty much it in that's going on in my greenhouse i have already i have moved the majority of my plants outside um, and i will go out there shortly and uh continue this video from there so I just realized, as I was reading back my other video, the first video that I just made, I was calling plants by their wrong names. I was actually calling this an epidendrum when it's, it's an encyclia, and actually, now that I look at it, the flower is open. And that is a tampensis. So woohoo, this is labeled correctly. Let me, um, I'm sure you all have seen tampensis before, but here, I'll show it to you again. This is the first flower open. Sure, did not see that before. There it is. Anyway, it's not going to focus for me. Of course not. But you get the gist. And this is an encyclia. So I also called my Bellina a path which it's a Phalaenopsis. So this is Phalaenopsis Bellina. Also, I was gonna point out this Selogeny, which is uh, South Carolina, which is crossed with something and Pandorata, I do believe. Um, it's got a couple new growths coming on. This was last year's growth. Uh, I was kind of hoping that some flowers would come because this growth was bigger than previous year's growth, whereas when I got it, it was blooming size, and this is the blooming size growth, so I think these are pretty comparable. So I don't know, maybe it will come from this new growth, but in any who, it's, it's uh, close to blooming size, so I'm expecting good things from that. Um, what else did I call wrong? Well, I can't seem to remember. Really, I'm not that dumb, but I just wanted to add that correction before I continue on with the the rest of the video. One thing that I did forget is that this mini Catlea that I got last year uh, from Gold Country Orchids, this is Catlea Small World. And this is a cross between Catlea Ludiola and Catlea Forbesia, two of my favorite Catleas, both miniatures. Um, an ideal to be crossed together. This was uh, last, the, the growth, it had just previously blown when I purchased the plant. Then it produced the growth shortly after that rotted out. And then this year's growth has, uh, is continuing to grow and it's pushing out something that could be another leaf. Yeah, it could definitely be another leaf which is fine, but at least the growth has not grown. So I'm pretty pleased with that, you know. I was worried that, you know, because is, these are two of my favorite species and of Catlea, and they're miniature, so who doesn't want a miniature of two of your favorite species? And when the last growth rotted, I was pretty worried, so I'm pretty pleased with this growth. While I'm hip up here, I recently delved into the deflasking just as an experiment, not that I'm really trying to do anything, because Lord knows I do not need any more plants. But um, this is a 
and sickly across. Uh, I believe it's Tampensis times uh, Cordigera, maybe, but I believe one of them is an album form. But anyhow, this is one of the flasks that I made. I actually got this from, um, what's her name? It's Anna. She's, uh, what's her channel? Crooked Orchids on YouTube. I believe that's what it's called. And uh, this is kind of my poor attempt at her uh, little mini terrarium. But it, it's, it attaches and it lets the air through. So um, still looking pretty green and lots of roots in there. It's doing okay. Whereas the one that I have down here, which is, uh, well, there's the cross right there. I need to, I think I'm just going to leave this off for now. It needs some ventilation because there's, look, they're starting to get some algae on here and I'll spritz this with some, some, um, Byzan. And I'm actually thinking about doing something else with this, maybe re-putting them in a community pod because look at the roots, they're looking kind of sad. So after I make this video, I'm going to immediately deal with this. I mean, this is not looking pretty good. But anyway, at least if, if this one perishes and the other one does okay, I'll be happy with that. Um, okay, that's it for this, for real. For inside, I mean. You know, one more thing I want to show before I go outside. This is my Dendrobium Fredericksonianum. Um, I recently repotted this. It was mounted, and it actually is still mounted. Um, the roots were cling, had clung to that wood, as you can see there so so attached so strong that I did not want to break them off so I literally just set it sideways in this hanging basket sitting on top of some coconut husk with some bark in there and set set the plant in there on the mount and covered some of the lower bits of the plant that were where the roots were coming out of which is right there um, in bark and it has produced a few new growths it still has this little bump right here not sure what that's going to be, probably a kiki, um, but this is my Frederick Sonny on him. Uh, it's doing okay. Didn't know if it would survive or not, still being attached to that mount, but it seems to be doing okay. There again, I hopefully, hopefully I didn't forget too much out here. Um, it's a lot easy to do when you have 300 plants, but anyway, I will continue outside.